Deku had Absorbing Man's Powers Part 1. Now, let's start our story off. And uh, before we start our story off, guys, I'm going to be now um, on my community chat. My community. Now, basically, guys, my community, pay, part of my page, I do upload a lot of, you know, um, thumbnails to videos I'm going to be making. Now, after this video, I am going to actually making a new... What if, what if Benton was in Invincible? Because I've only been, I only done one Invincible what if so far, and that was what if Shazam was in Invincible. Now I am going to be uploading what if Benton was in Invincible and seeing how that would work and seeing how, you know, so how many people would like that. Also, guys, um, do you guys want to see that? But yeah. Also, I am going to be uploading what if Deku was a sea monster later today. And also a couple other what ifs, and that's basically it. So I'm gonna be uploading at least three what ifs today. And let's get started, guys. This is what if Deku had Exorbing Man's powers part one. Now, let's get into Exorbing Man's origin before we get into Deku's origin and how he got the powers. Now, it won't be a quirk, but Deku will get his powers. So Deku's powers are going to be Deku's um Invincibles. Sorry. I'm kind of messing up my scripts right now. So, Exorbing Man's powers are pretty in the name itself. He can absorb anything and pretty much distribute it into a, f a part of his body or as an energy source. And Exorbing Man has been shown to do a lot of incredible feats of strength. Like Exorbing Colossus's um, Colossus um, that middle x-men pretty much absorbing his powers to become as strong as him also he's been able to absorb thor's middle from his hammer he's been able to absorb myth mythical objects his middle also been able to pretty much tango with vibranium and also um carbonadium he's also been able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with hulk in some occasions and also been able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with thor and also, he got his powers originally by, uh, what was it, a potion that Loki gave him that would give him the ability to absorb anything. Now, also, Exorb Man was able to absorb other objects like, you know, basically his powers were kind of like a Kevin Eleven's powers, but like a lot more powerful. Basically, he can absorb energy as well, and also absorb, you know, other stuff like walls or concrete or bricks or, you know, metal or like something as simple as gold or something. All he needs is a sample of it or a, you know, object that has that you know, material that he can absorb from. So all he needs is the material or a sample of the material. Also, Exorbing Man has, a, has I guess, the abilities or the strength of that object if the object had some sort of human-like body. And basically, he gets superhuman strength depending on what object he absorbs. Also, he can get the, um, pretty much effects or the powers that the object gives if the object is an energy source like lightning or radiation or something like that so exorbitant man also has the ability to absorb cosmic energy kind of like the same cosmic energy that you know galactus uses or that you know silver surfer uses so he can absorb that and you know do all that also and a couple other power, a couple other powers, but mainly absorbing objects and being able to use them. Now, basically, absorbing man, I don't really know the limits, but I'm pretty sure absorbing doesn't have any many limits, unless absorbing man is tricked into changing through, you know, absorbing forms or trying to absorb other objects. And basically, also absorbing man's power weaknesses, he gets the weakness of the object he absorbs. So if he absorbed sand, he can be, you know, watered down and drowned. If he absorbs glass, he can be shattered. If he absorbs bricks, you know, a sledgehammer might do it the trick. If he absorbs metal, you know, the burning temperature for that metal he absorbs can be, you know, used on him. So basically, he just has to be really careful in what object he absorbs. If his, you know, opponent has the ability to destroy that object or that middle pretty easily. So, Exorbing Man is, you know, a crook and he was given his powers by Loki. Now, Deku gives powers a different type of way, but it will not be a quirk and, you know, the government will know that Deku does not have a quirk and some sort of, you know, 
experiment or something. So basically, Deku, let's start a story off with Deku when he's a lot younger. About when he's about five. When Deku finds out he's quirkless, Deku is heartbroken. And something snaps in Deku. Now in this universe, after Deku, after Deku was born, uh, Dino's quirkless, Inko started going through a little bit of trouble with bills and everything. So Deku had an idea to maybe get some money for his parents or his family. So Deku started to do this light, you know, um, pretty much light, you know, pocket picking. Or pretty much breaking the people's lockers and stuff like that. Deku got enough money to support his mom, but half of the time his mom declined it, saying, you know, not to steal. And when Deku was caught stealing from his mom. When Deku was caught stealing one day by a police officer, a police officer pretty much tried to stop Deku. Deku got away because Deku was pretty athletic and could run pretty fast for a quirkless person. Deku eventually was caught, but we're going to get into that later. When Deku was caught, Deku was put into jail about um, 14. He was caught and put in the jail. Now, that same day, a couple months later when Deku was in prison, about to be moved to uh, what was it, jail or prison, Deku was got a call by his, you know, mom and pretty much called his mom one day but getting stopped by a police officer or a pretty much police officer in the jail stopping Deku saying, I'm sorry kid, but your mom's dead. Deku was heartbroken to hear this. Deku was honestly just shocked to hear this, that he wasn't even there for his mom's you know, death, or couldn't even save her if she was, you know, murdered. They said that she actually was murdered and she didn't just pass away, but we don't know who did it. So Deku, after that, he was actually bailed out by his father that was working overseas, and they went to, you know, Inko's funeral. Now Deku was pretty much, you know, pit, I mean, like, straight up pissed that he wasn't even able to meet his mom or really meet his mom for the last time before she died. And the last time Deku ever met his mom was lying to her face to try to get some money for her to help with the bills. Now Deku's father did get a raise the same day Inko died. So he was able to get the money or get the family back on track, but also was able to bail out Deku. So they were back, you know, in middle class and they weren't poor. They were still, you know, in middle class. They had money. Basically, Deku's father sent Deku to, well, back to his school for the la for the following six days. This following six weeks until the entry exams, or, you know, the start of canon My Hero Academia. Now, since Deku was, well, you know, Deku was really angry with himself. And eventually tried to, you know, help prop pretty much make his mom proud because the one thing his mom wanted Deku to be is follow his dreams and when Deku told his mom that he wanted to be a hero when he was younger his mom supported Deku in all of his you know vendettas and also gave Deku a little bit of training that's how Deku get away so fast Deku had training and you know acrobatics so Deku was pretty athletic for you know a carcass person so Deku in that second pretty much went to the darkest part of his mind and went online for m several months eventually finding a website that said it would give him a quirk so Deku for being desperate after the death of his mom went for it and Deku went to some sort of alleyway a couple blocks away from his house and got snatched now the League of Villains actually weren't there this isn't the League of Villains this is actually pretty much an organization called quirk finders now, they were tasked by All for One to basically make humanoid hybrids and basically make artificial quirks. So, you know, they could use them to take down the hero organization. Because artificial quirks, they don't work like normal quirks. They aren't able to be disengaged or dampened by any cuffs or by any type of, you know, quirk inhibited quirks. So. Deku got captured, and Deku started to get experimented on, and over the course of three months, I know, under the course of three weeks, Deku started developing artificial quirk signs. 
at first, artificial quirks, it's tricky because your body will rather reject it or come to it very nicely. But Deku's body started to reject it slightly through the days. Deku started ejecting vomit and losing a lot of fluids, also bleeding out from the nose, ears, and eyes, and all sorts of other stuff. Deku basically felt sick at all times and could never go to the bathroom or even breathe right for some days. So eventually, it was the sixth, di the sixth week, the sixth week of Deku's treatment, and Deku's quirk started to, you know, enhance and kick in. And Deku started to developing powers. When Deku would touch something, his hands would shake or twitch, and then he would start turning into that object, or his skin or his body would turn into the same material as that object. So he started training Deku and studying his vitals, seeing that he could absorb any type of object. At first, I thought it was only, you know, physical objects like, you know, metal or wood, or bricks, or something like that, but they so found that Deku could absorb energy as well. So they started training Deku, and was able, was about to, you know, try to send Deku over to all for one, but Deku escaped the last second. Now, for Deku's escape, it was about two days before they were about to send Deku to all for one. Now, Deku did escape, Deku did escape, and at the last minute before they were about to sit, haul Deku into the ship or the airplane to send Deku down to the island all for one own that was about to, you know, experiment on Deku and try to train Deku to be his lackey like Shigaraki and the rest of the Eagle villains. Eventually, Deku got away and went under the radar. Deku dyed his hair black and started going off, you know, the rails and pretty much went off the border. Deku eventually found his parent, found his father, but his father moved on. Now, since Deku's been gone for like months, the he pretty much heroes and the police just thought Deku was quirkless. I mean, De they found that Deku was quirkless, and they basically didn't put a lot of effort in finding Deku. So, you know, they let Deku just, they just classified Deku as dead. So, Asashi, in this universe, is kind of a jerk. He moved on pretty quickly. Knowing that his wife is dead and also his son is dead, he moved on about six months after Deku was declared dead. And moved on marrying a girl named, I don't know, um, I don't know, I'm just gonna give her like a weird name, Bella? I don't know, Bella. Basically, he married her and started a new life. And Deku saw this scene that the woman was pregnant. And Deku thought, you know, his father moved on so quickly, and it's just shocked at the shock to see the sight. Deku didn't have the courage to go up there and accuse his father, and he just loved him be. And Deku started making a new life for himself. Deku started. Deku got a semi job building pieces and was able to get a apartment. His apartment was kind of janky, but it was good enough to actually, you know, live in. So Deku lived in and basically left, lived off ramen and a couple other stuff and lived, pretty much lived on a futon in the house and sat there and slept on it. Deku also lived off his phone and that was basically it. Deku lived off his phone and didn't, didn't have a TV. He just watched stuff on his phone. So eventually Deku saw the news about the, the you know, entry exams and saw it as an opportunity. And said that maybe this is why my mom wanted me to be a hero. So Deku signed up for UA and went to UA the same the following day for the entry exams. Now Deku was trained in certain combat skills. Now Deku the only combat training that Deku had was acrobatics and pretty much boxing. And that was basically it. He had nothing else. He just had boxing, street fighting, and acrobatics. And the, you know, ability to try to the ability to, or the trick, or the pretty much s skill to basically s steer people off of his scent, or to make people, you know, get mixed up or get lost trying to find Deku. So, Deku was pretty good at sneaking away. So, Deku started, you know, getting ready for the entry exams. Now, Deku went to the entry exams with a black hoodie. And ripped up jeans. And with pretty much his sleeves tucked up. 
Deku got ready, pretty much bumping into Ochaku, still in canon. Well, not really bumping into her, still tripping in canon, and pretty much gets pulled up by Ochaku. Pretty much, Ochaku says, I didn't mean to use that cork on you, but you're about to fall anyways. Pretty much, you're having kind of the same conversation, but Deku wasn't so muttery and so, you know, stupid, or, a, you know, a wimp, like in canon. Canon Deku. So, he just said, uh-huh, and pretty much walked off, bumping into, you know, Ochaku pushing her aside. He went to the entry exams and started getting ready. They got ready, and they got started. So... Deku took his hoodie off, basically having a pair of shades trying to hide his identity, but people just thought he was dead. And also he dyed his hair, and that was the only real thing that they knew about Deku, that he had, you know, green hair. So, they couldn't really recognize Deku that much. And also, no one really cared about Deku because he was workless and he wasn't really, you know, a big person in society. So, Deku pretty much got ready, and they saw Deku was shirtless, and some of the girls were, you know, fangirling. Seeing that Deku was straight up jacked. So they got ready and they started the testing or the entry exams. Deku started sprinting past everybody, not wasting any second to not having any second to waste. It turns touching a one pointer off bat, absorbing its, you know, middle and transforming into that material, punching it into the ground and started to punch robots left and right. They saw Deku, some of the people saw Deku's quirk in action and said that's a pretty cool quirk for, you know, somebody that looks kind of, you know, weird. Pretty much people just started judging Deku, judging Deku because Deku has, Deku has some scars on his body. Now, Deku had this scar and the scar on his hand in canon, but, but by training, not by one fall. So, Deku started running around and started kicking robots in the buildings left and right using his newfound using his powers or his newfound material he found off the zero pointer and very much started punching robots in the sky. Now Deku eventually found upon the zero pointer I mean the one pointer he punched the one pointer then he found the zero pointer. Deku's about to run away but he heard a girl screaming but Deku still ran away because you know Deku doesn't want to be that type of hero. So Deku just wanted to Get into UA to make his mom proud, so he didn't want to be an actual hero. Deku's about to run away for good, but he stopped at the last second thinking more and more about his mom. And started sprinting backwards, going back for the girl. The girl was about to get stomped on by the zero pointer, but Deku's jumped in, turning into some sort of concrete, you know, person. Concrete man, grabbing her and chucking her out of the way. Being a concrete person. Basically, Deku started you know, sprinting towards the recovery girl office and pretty much, you know, left her there. Him running back into the fake city trying to get more points. Deku saw that the whole entire thing was over and everybody was sent back home. They are sent back home. So for the following couple of days, Deku got the note from Yue that he got into, you know, Yue. Deku... Also got into class 1A, so Deku was pretty excited for this. Now, Deku went to UA and walked into class 1A, seeing everybody there, but also seeing Bakugo. Now, Bakugo bullied Deku, but Bakugo was pretty, was a, a semi-sad for finding out that Deku was dead, but Bakugo didn't know. So Deku, you know, walked it down, not having eye contact with Bakugo. Deku sitting down, pretty much seeing, you know, Chaku walking to class and pretty much thinking, you know, Deku for saving her. Also asking about it for his name. Now, Deku didn't want to say Izuku Midoriya or Deku because Bakugo knew those, knew those names. So Deku just said, John, that's my name. John Michael. Basically saying that instead of, you know, his actual name. So John Michael, pretty much, you know, pretty much Deku said, but also you can call me, you know, Deku. By the way, Bakugo not really seeing anything wrong with this. Not you know, hearing that his name was John Michael, pretty much not paying to it together, just thinking, you know, that was just a nickname for him. That was a coincidence. So Deku took the mantle or the name of John Michael. So pretty much Ochaku thanked Deku and started, you know, pretty much fangirling saying that you have a pretty cool quirk. Pretty much a couple Kirishima also saying, I saw you doing the entry exams. You had a pretty good quirk. 
you started to absorb, you know, objects or something, and then you started punching zero one point where it's like they were nothing. Deku said, thank you, you know, making a small conversation, having a group of people around him, becoming pretty popular already. Now, when Zao walks in the class, they stop talking, and as Zao explains to the class, they're doing quirk assessments and they get all their lazy bums and see what you guys got. They get off, and Deku's told to throw the ball first, and Deku grabs the ball and chucks it, exor pretty much chucks it, chucks it, pretty much absorbing the balls, pretty much the... Pretty much the alloy in the middle of the ball that was tracking the ball's velocity. Pretty much chucking the ball about mm, 50, 50 meters. Now, for the long jump, Deku, throw, De Deku absorbs some sand. Pretty much sand. Pretty much turning into sand. And, you know, pulling the sand man. Pretty much absorbing into the sand pit. And jumping into it left and right and around. Now... He was given a zero point. He was given zero points because he didn't really technically jump over it. He turned into the sand, so it was far from jumping. So for the race, Deku absorbed. Now actually, Deku didn't absorb anything. He just ran. Deku just ran because you know he was pretty fast. So Deku got sixth place, and for the what was it? For the grip test strength, Deku absorbed the middle for the grip test and got about second place. So. All together, Deku got about fifth place. No, Deku got fourth place, and Deku had a pretty good score. Now, Deku and everybody else is sent back home, getting handed their syllabus, and I'm not. And I'm gonna end it off here, guys. Now, I actually should have put a lot more thought in this in this part one, but part two is gonna be a little bit more better and a lot more, you know, thought through. Cause this what if. It was mainly just put together fast because I just wanted to upload this video pretty fast. So honestly, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys like and subscribe. And as always, guys, put comment down below and have a blessed day. But also, before I leave, guys, comment down below what you think part two should be about. So see you guys there. Bye. Deuces. And as always, guys, have a blessed day.